farmers and welcome back to Goldcrest Valley on the way up to the big wheat field up in the northeast. Uh, field number five, I think it is. Got everything set up there except for this 8230 and the baler, which will be following behind the combine as we're harvesting the wheat. I uh, got the baling trailer up here. Of course, we got the grain trailer up here as well. Everything is set to go. So, uh, yeah, it's time to profit from this field that we spent four hundred eighty thousand dollars on and then of course we spread lime and fertilizer on it and soil samples of course but uh yeah the wheat was already planted in the field when we purchased it uh but let's get the baler all set up to go it's a grass field that we're kind of in right now so i don't think that farmer is going to mind that much yeah of course i don't have access to this field uh let's see let's go ahead and hit control f you're following the class try on uh you know what follow 30 meters behind us i think that'll be good and let's see, who we got today? Oh boy, it's Frank. Uh, we'll see how he does. See what kind of mood he's in. Uh, let's turn, well, before I turn on that, uh, Straw Swath is on. Oh, that's right, because the last harvest was in Oatfield. So it should be a Straw Swath. Uh, I don't know what to expect for a yield off this field. I, you know, depending on the soil type. But since we spent like $480,000 on this field, uh... What, what can I hope for for a good yield here? Uh, 120. Let's just shoot for 120,000 liters. I think that's possible. Um, but as my experience has been on Oceanside Forest, I am not good at guessing how many liters we're going to get off of a field. So I'll just say what I should normally just say. We get what we get. Uh, but it's kind of fun to guess once in a while to see what you're, where you're at. We will be selling these straw bales off the field. We got plenty of straw down at the cow barn. They don't need any more straw than what they already have. And plus, we still got another wheat and barley field to harvest down there anyway. So if I change my mind, I'll take the straw off there. But the straw we get off this field, uh, I'll just probably pick on up and go ahead and sell it. August is like the worst month to be selling straw. So, yeah, I mean... I don't know why I keep saying that for. We're just going to probably sell it right now anyway, just to get rid of it. Just to get rid of it. It's not that much of a price difference between the worst price and the best price. Uh, in the early stages of the Let's Play, I probably would have probably would hang on to it until the price was better. But we're sitting on $420,000 and not really going to be buying any more fields. So, yeah, I'm not too worried about saving up that much more money. We almost got uh, two thirds of a combine load going up one pass on this side of the field. I'm going to get a headland done first. I may go around and pick up the bales in a little bit. That way, they're not in the way of our combine as we move around. I make sure all the straw kind of stays in the field. I don't want to get off the field and have some of the straw not on our property so Frank can't pick it on up. While he stopped, let me go. No, let me go. Let me go. Let me go, Frank. Frank, Frank, let me go. Really, you're going to get stuck on? Yep. Yeah. So that's what happens when you try to beat someone. And Frank, uh, yeah. I mean, that's my fault right there, honestly. I saw him dropping the bail. I'm like, I can get around him. All right, we'll pick this back up. And then, uh, well, now we'll see who gets behind the 8230. Maybe Frank saw that and said, that's it, I'm out. He won't come back. He won't come back at all. Frank's probably gone. Uh, should still be 30 meters behind us. Yeah, Francine's going to get in there. Frank's, Frank said, uh, if, that's, if that's the way the day's going to start, he's out of here too. All right. Put the blame on me on that one. All right, put the pipe on out, and we'll have to unload this. So we're going to be unloading quite a bit. I would, of course, prefer the trailer that I use in most of my series, the dump body trailer that holds 120,000 liters. Uh, but the one we do have least currently does hold like 58,000, I do believe. Let's go grab that now because we're at 99% full. Uh, let's see here. Yep, perfect. Yeah, I'm just trying to switch up what trailers I use. And this trailer here is good for all the other fields. But this one, this one just uh, won't be able to manage, I mean, even the 120,000 liter trailer 
may not be able to handle this field. Because that was my guess, 120,000 liters off this field. And everything will be going into the silo and sold in December. And yeah, we have been talking about this being the last season here on Goldcrest Valley. And I did say that at the end of the series, we will sell everything. Just to see how much money we made while we're here. It's going to be probably, what, 75 episodes? 70, 75 episodes in total that we were here. Came here with $2 million. Uh, we bought, of course, a lot of land and a couple... Actually, no, I don't think I could buy any starting equipment because we only bought used stuff. And I don't think there was anything used that we could have bought. So we probably leased everything at the very beginning. But, of course, land value does not change. And we're sitting with $420,000 in the bank account. I don't know what we're going to end up with. Uh, five or six million dollars probably should can I say more I don't know I really don't know uh, what we're gonna end up with plus I mean we still got plenty more to do here on this series uh, I think we're gonna make a good amount of money off the corn field which we're gonna turn into corn chaff which will then be compressed covered and turned into silage which we'll sell in December I'm not gonna make that into methane we do have the VGA and power plant. That'll be $350,000 in property right there, those production buildings. Or do you only get half when you sell them back? Yeah, I think you only get half the money when you sell them back. Or can I sell them back? I'm not sure. It's been a long time since I've sold a production building that was on the map. I don't know how you get your money back on that. I don't know if you get 100%, but I'm guessing 50%. Well, we'll find out when the time comes. I'm not even sure the power plant is going to go through all the methane that got delivered there and the transformer oil as well. But I think we've made some money back on the power plant. I would hope so. Just keep, uh, keep on bringing out those bales. Yep, kind of going to be doing the same thing here. Let's see if follow me, which I think... I think they'll just do a, a U-turn when they get to the end. It used to be backing up used to confuse the follow me worker. I think that's been a... You know, that's been fixed a long time ago. I'm just so used to where it causes problems. Let's see what they do. Yeah, if I just did that the first time, it won't be too bad. I'll just have to go around and get a few pieces of straw that they missed here and there. But once I get a headland done, I should have enough room to turn around on the field. And then we wouldn't have any more problems. But the good thing I'm seeing already is look how fast this combine is filling on up. It is going to be a great yield. But this isn't the only field that we got to harvest this month. Like I said, oops, I wasn't paying attention. Now we got some crop destruction. That's just a little bit, but still a little bit. Every little bit counts sometimes. Um, yeah, we got the wheat field and barley field down by the cow barn. That needs to be harvested. Well, it doesn't really need to be harvested today. I can probably either harvest it in August or September. But seeing that the weather looks really, really good here in August, I'd rather get it all done this month. You don't want to push it back a month and then find out it's going to rain all next month. Although I don't think I've ever had a day completely full of rain. And it doesn't really matter with FS22 and seasons that when it rains, we don't have to wait for the crop to dry after a rainstorm. That was another uh, cool feature with Seasons in 19, if you ran the that mod. It wasn't like right after rain, you just get right there and harvest. You had to wait for the crop to dry, which could take a couple of hours. Hopefully, 
right there where I backed up a little bit. Hopefully, uh, Francine doesn't do a U-turn because my grain trailer is going to be in the way. Oh, she's dropping a bale. And then hopefully, she just keeps on going forward. Perfect. main goal for this episode alone is this take care of this wheat field right here. It's going to take a while to get the harvest done. Luckily we got the 45 foot header to help us on out. This is probably the only field here where having the 60 foot header would help us out. But then all the other fields, the 60 foot header might be a little bit too much. And I don't feel like leasing the 60 foot header for one field. I'm more than happy using the 45 footer for this field once a year. They're now with the headlands done. I won't be doing any backing up. It's just going to be turning around, going back and forth. Uh, I will have to kind of time when to unload the combine because I don't want the auger pipe to be on the side that has the crop on it. So what I'll probably do when I get down the end of this row, I'll unload the combine. Can I make it back and forth before the combine is full? Well, we'll find out uh, sooner rather than later when we get down here. I just keep dropping off those bales. She get a whole bunch of bales off this field. We'll make some money off of that as well. But I'm starting to think 120,000 liters off this field. It might be underestimating this field. I don't know. Let's see. We've already unloaded twice. So that's uh, like 24,000 liters. I haven't gone around the headlands yet. And I'm going to have a third full combine here. All right. So this might be a lot better harvest than I, than I originally thought. Because 100,000 liters would give us, what, like $30,000 worth of wheat? If it goes for like $300 per. All right, let's grab the grain trailer once again. Yeah, we got 24,000 liters in here. Well, this should be a very, very good harvest either way. Just imagine if I didn't lease this trailer or have this trailer on the farm, we'd be using our little 24,000 liter trailer. I'd be making a lot of trips back and forth already. That is a big straw swath. I'm trying to, I'm amazed that the baler behind us is going to pick most of that up. we can just go on and continue. I am going to unload the combine again once I get to the end of this row. I want a nice empty combine heading back up the other way. This field uh, looks bigger than I, what I thought it was. The only thing I really remember about this field back in FS17, the first job I ever did in it was a contract job for Sugar Beet. I think the job was paying something like, you know, like $140,000. And I was like, yeah, give me that contract, please. I'm like, it's not going to take me too long. So, I, you know, I was just thinking, yeah, it's going to take just as long as it would to harvest it with a regular harvester. The amount of Sugar Beet I got off that field hard to tell because back in FS17 when we did I think they were called missions back then um, you never had to unload the combine into a trailer you just got the you just got the harvester and went around you 
didn't have to deliver the grain anywhere. So the combine would just get like, you know, 99% full and kind of like just stay there. But you can keep on harvesting. Alright, now the question is, can... I should be able to at least get to the other end of the field, I think. Before we get full. But if I get full, well, I'll just have to back up a little bit and empty into the grain trailer that way. So I did make it down to the other end of the field, turned around and got this far, but it's far enough. Uh, as long as I keep on emptying out when I get to the other end of the field, I'll make it on the way down. While that is unloading the combine though, we're going to grab the K7250 and the baling trailer. And I want to pick up the bales at the uh, ends of the field, that way they're not going to be in the way when we get around to harvesting that part. So let's go around this way and pick up these bales. Yeah, we're just about at a full grain trailer already. So I definitely underestimated the yield off this field. I'm terrible at that lately. Or I don't know if I was actually ever good at it, but with Ocean Shot Ocean Sh Ocean Shine? Ocean Side Forest, I've been overestimating on those fields quite a bit. And now here, I think I greatly underestimated the yield that we're gonna get. Uh, oopsies. Alright, fold that back up for a second. Okay, put that down. Now that should grab it. Perfect. There we go. Now I shouldn't have to worry about any straw bales being in the way of our harvest. And what I'll probably do every time I go to unload the combine, I'll probably jump in the 7250 and pick up the bales. Leave that right there. I'll turn the engine off though. Um, how full are we in the grain trailer? Are we full enough where I should just go unload it now? Uh, no, I can probably wait until I get to the end of the field. When I unload the combine again. Now we can't even really see the other end of the field. Alright, should, should I say 240,000 liters off this field? Let's go for 250. Let's just round up to 250. That's probably too much, but it, yeah, now I'm probably overestimating again. 250 is what I'm going to guess. Again, changing my guesses like always. Well, a little bit of a progress update. This is the second trailer of wheat bringing on down here, which is just shy of 60,000 liters every time I come here. So that means we are at 120,000 liters harvested off the field. I don't think we're quite halfway done yet. Um, almost there. Uh, but I'll show you how far we are when we get back to the field. I will say, though, this truck does not like a full trailer behind it kind of spins around really fast as most trucks do in the game been a thing since uh, I can remember even going at slow speeds though this truck will spin around and jackknife pretty darn quick and if I remember correctly I think this silo can hold 3 million liters of grain into it so should be all set should have to worry about overfilling that at all Let's get back to the field. I got to empty out the combine and keep on going. Uh, I think it's been about a half an hour since I last saw you. So the harvest is going on rather well. And there you can see the field up ahead and where we are currently. I stopped picking up the bales because I thought, yeah, I'll pick them up while I'm emptying out. But honestly, there's going to be so many bales here, I don't think... Picking up a few and loading up the trailer is going to matter too much at this current point. Uh, but this is where we're currently at. 
Now, the good thing with precision farming, or though I would say there's a few good things about precision farming, uh, right here I got this field highlighted, so this is the only field. And since this is our first harvest off it, this is going to be the, uh, the only current totals that we got. So, so far we got 122,000 liters off the field. You can see I'm currently, uh, we've harvested this whole part of the field. And I got this whole part left to go, except for the one headland I made around it. And currently it says uh, if I were to sell the wheat, we made a profit of almost $11,000 off the field. So, much further to go. I don't know if that takes into consideration... The straw bales as well. I don't know if it does that. But even still, uh, we're doing pretty darn good. Oh yeah, we got we got a ways to go. So maybe a quarter of a million liters of wheat out the field is not out of the reach. When I said that, I was like, that would be nice in my brain. But uh, I don't think we're going to reach that. But it's nice to have high goals and try to reach them. So, um, yeah, like I said, it's been about maybe... 20 or 30 minutes to harvest as much as I have so far. I thought about doing this harvest in a time lapse, but really that would just be like a 10 minute time lapse even, it seems like. So I'll bring it back once again, uh, maybe near the end of the harvest, and we can kind of see where we stand or how we finish on up. But we will finish this field this episode, and then uh, we'll also see how many bales we made. I don't have the bale counter, I think, reset in the baler. But I can go into the stats page and see how much I've, uh, or how much we have bailed during this session. So, I'm going to keep on going, of course. Uh, the weather is looking good. Uh, you can see I I'm keeping at real time, so uh, I don't really know what time it was when we, when I last left you. But it is now 20 to 10. I'll probably see you maybe at quarter past 10. Maybe somewhere in there. And, uh, yeah, fingers crossed by then. I, I hope I'm done by the field almost by then. Hopefully. The end of the harvest is near. Got this pass here and one more to go. It's kind of interesting to see how the yield is going along the field. Uh, I'm having a, a little bit of trouble making it all the way to the end of a row once in a while on this end of the field compared to the other side of the field which I didn't so must be the different soil types so I've been bringing up the in the bottom left hand corner on the mini map we can see the yield that we're getting on certain parts of the field been rather interesting all right definitely have to empty out the combine because we are at 96 percent let's go ahead and grab the grain trailer so you may be wondering, are we going to reach 250,000 liters off this field? Well, yes. Uh, we, we, we have achieved that, uh, but not that much more. So way better than I thought. And then when I said 250,000, I was like, well, that'd be nice to reach it. And we have. So pretty darn good. The only uh, tab I've been really keeping an eye on is the precision farming tab. I've been kind of fascinated about it by it this uh field for some reason i never really looked at well i've looked at it but never really you know looked at it deep enough to see uh what's going on so with precision farming you can get a stats page for all the fields on that lot so luckily for us on this lot here the only field on it is one we're harvesting so you can see uh we did four soil samples so far in this field and that cost us six hundred dollars we spent nearly $11,000 putting lime on the field. We spent $15,300 for putting down mineral fertilizer. We didn't use any liquid fertilizer. We had not used any manure or slurry. We did not plant the field, so we didn't uh, have any seed charges. No herbicide. We have spent uh, almost 1,800 gallons of fuel and going up. A vehicle maintenance has cost us nearly $3,600 on the field. And so far, our yield has been 253,000 liters for a total of 85,000. So you can see the expense on the field is right around 32,000. And the earnings out the field so far are 8,500. And that's our grand total so far. So that is, a, you know, it's an interesting tab that, you know, if you really uh, want to dive deep into it and see, you know, how much money you're making off a field. Precision farming can really give you a lot of details. I mean, that's been there ever since Precision Farming's been in FS22. I just never really dove and really looked into it that much because I figured the field's going to give you what's going to give you. 
Uh, but it is kind of interesting to see how much money we're making out of the field. Now, the one thing I don't know is, I don't think it's actually calculating how much we're making out the straw bales. And I haven't looked at to see how many straw bales we made. I want to keep it a uh, secret to myself as well so I can take a guess when we get all done on how many bales we have made. Uh, I don't know as of yet, but I would say maybe 60. I'm, I'm going to guess maybe 60 right now. Or is that, is that, is that enough? Let's see, that's, that's like 10 bales there. Oh, yeah, probably more than 60. What am I thinking? Uh, it's kind of hard to see because we're not at the crest of the hill to see the other side of the field. Okay, maybe, maybe close to 80. Is that over? That might be too much. I'm going to guess 80. I'll leave it at that. I'm going to guess 80 bales. So if that precision farming doesn't take into consideration the profit from the bales, uh, then we probably made a lot more of the field. And I'm guessing it's what is giving us the profit off the field is giving us the price of the grain at the state of harvesting because uh, it'd be kind of hard to recalculate as the price keeps fluctuating. And yes, I do see the, har the harvester did not miss that little patch of wheat over there. That is a pass on the field where the harvester filled up. And of course, the auger is on the harvest non-harvested side. And since it was just a little patch, I just, just, just decided to drive on through it, destroy a little bit of crop in that way. You know, I, I probably destroyed as much driving through as I would have trying to get the uh, grain trailer underneath the auger. So, yeah, probably lost maybe 100 liters of wheat right there driving through it. But this harvest has taken me a little while longer than I thought it would. But when it comes time to sell the grain in December, uh, you know, we'll see the money going up and rejoice on... <laughs> the fruits of our labor. Let's get this little piece here. And Francine has been, a, been doing a fantastic job. So now if I go into this field here, if I go to not soil types, uh, pH value, nitrogen, uh, the yield in this field. Yeah, I was getting, oh, could be because there's a lot more green. Must be the different type of soil all through here. So yeah. Going up this pass here, you can see I was in the green for quite a while. Of course, like we said, it all depends on the soil type. And the soil type can be kind of reflected in right there. You can kind of see, as we see, silty clay, not the greatest. Uh, but loam apparently is pretty darn good. And sandy loam in the corners there. Yeah, so sandy loam is not as good as loam, apparently. And we don't actually have any loamy sand to see how well the harvest would be there. So we ended up with uh, 263,377 liters off the field. Uh, not too bad. Let me go ahead and turn that off. Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of Francine. That sounds kind of sad to say because she's been doing a great job. Frank didn't hang around too long after uh, in the beginning where I kind of, uh, well, pushed him out of the way in a sense. So, yeah, we got her to take over, but she did a great job. And now let's get to the truck. Let's grab the rest of the wheat and bring it on over to the silo, put it on in there. And like I said, we will sell that in December. Our last month possibly here on Goldcrest Valley. I'm, I'm almost sure this December is going to be the last uh, part of Goldcrest Valley. Just because, I, like I said, I don't see anything else that we need to be doing here. Um, we're not saving up for anything in particular yeah there's a few more items i wouldn't mind buying off the sale page if it ever comes up but the chances of them coming up you know are very very i don't want to say very slim but slim enough that just hanging around for another couple more years just waiting for those items to come up not really necessary i better turn the combine off once i get done don't want to be wasting any more fuel I was wondering halfway through the harvest if I was going to have to go back to the farm at some point and top off on some diesel, but uh, yeah, we're more than okay here. I'll definitely top it off with fuel on the way through before we go harvest the barley and wheat field on the other side of the map. Way on the other side. All right, so you can start guessing at how many bales we got. I guess this is the best view I can give you. 
of the whole field. Uh, some bales are probably not even rendering in on the other side of the field. That's how big the field is. Uh, I was guessing 80. Well, first I guessed 60. Then I thought maybe more than that. Uh, 80 might be too much. But you had a little while to guess, and uh, I'll even just pan behind us again. See what we got there. All right, let's go check to see how many bales we actually made today. So we just got to scroll on down here. Bales produced. Oh, wow, 98. 98 bales. All right. Um, <laughs> that's a good amount of bales. That's going to be four trips with a baling trailer to get them off the field. And usually we get about 10,000 per load. Uh, like I said, August, I think, is the worst time to sell straw. Hopefully the price goes up a lot better tomorrow. Yeah, August is the worst at, worst at like 29. And you can see September. We'll definitely wait until September to sell them. Um, because we're going to have the wheat and barley field to pick up as well. Or maybe I can wait actually even a little bit longer. 29. What's the current? What are they going for right now? Well, 32. That's not too bad. Looks like the price is going back up. Um, but maybe we'll wait because there's no rush to get back in this field currently. But just, just a reminder, as I said, even though December might be or should be the last month that we're going to be here, we're going to keep on farming as if we're going to be here for years to come. So if I come on down here and check the crop rotation, actually, let me do that now. So let's see, what do we got here? It was follow, then wheat. Then, well, then pretty much almost any crop is going to look good here. Uh, whoop, follow. Wheat. So let's see, what would give us a good rotation? Uh, sugar beet? Well, I wouldn't be doing that. But I mean, I guess I could plant it. Oats. So oats would go in this field next, or sugar beet. And oats, we couldn't, we won't be able to plant until next year. I don't think oats can be in the fall, no. So yeah, we are pretty much done with this field, so I won't, won't be planting this field. So those bales can actually stay there until the price goes up a little bit more. But any fields that uh, crop rotation says we should be putting a certain crop in and it needs to be planted in the fall, we will plant it. Well, let's go get the rest of this wheat into the silo. Oh, before I do, though, I should probably top off the chickens because I had yet to do that. Make the chickens all nice and happy. have learned to turn gently with this grain trailer on the back in this truck because it jackknifes really, really quick. Oh, there it is. I was like, trigger should be here somewhere. All right, chickens are good for months to come. And in that goes. All right, let's leave that here. Uh, I can't remember. When did I sell the alfalfa field? Did that farmer do anything with that field yet? Probably not. Yeah, it's still alfalfa. They haven't done nothing with it as of yet. Uh, let's run over here for a second since, I'm, uh, since I did look at the crop rotation in one field. Let's see if I got any planting to do this year. Uh, wheat, then oats. All right, so wheat, then oats. Well, sugar beet is a good crop. Uh, soybean, corn, canola. We could put canola into this field. Probably canola would be the best. So this field will get planted with canola, which we can plant in the fall. And actually, it is time to plant canola now. But I got August, September, and October. So I'll probably do in September or October, we'll plant canola into this field and uh, make it nice and all happy. Uh, let's go over to this other field here and see if there's something I need to plant in that one. It did have just canola into it. 
and I want to say it was barley or oats before that, a couple years ago. Let's see, what was it? Oats and then canola. All right. Uh, oats, then canola. Wait, where's canola? So a good crop to put in would be soybean for sure. Uh, do we? I don't think we plant soybean in the fall. No, soybean would be next year. So this field we are we are pretty much done with. So only this field right here currently would be canola. Uh, the clover field is all set. We are done with that. We've even fertilized it. So then we just got to focus on this small field 21, which I'm thinking about just selling once we get done because I, I, I that field is just too small. Uh, and then we got these fields right here along with the corn field to take care of. So, plenty more fields to take care of. We got plenty more work to do here. Like I said, uh, I think we're like on episode 65-ish, somewhere around there. So, maybe like another 5 or 10 episodes we got here in Goldcrest Valley. And, uh, and then we'll wrap it up, sell everything, and see what we made. But the big field is done. And, like I said, not too bad for one year. Uh, we did spend... Uh, let's see. So far, it says we made a profit of $56,000 off it. And we did buy the field for... 428 so but that i don't think that counts as straw bales and that's going to bring us in probably like another forty thousand right there so within four years i'd get my money back on that field so it says roughly give or take but anyways that's going to do it for today guys hopefully you guys did enjoy the episode i do appreciate you watching as always i'll catch you again right here in goldcrest valley but until then have a good one